So on-page content. Content is a big part of what we're going to talk about because Google specifically has been shifting back to focusing on content quality rather than links and other metrics. So there's three areas that we're going to talk about. One is, is the, the, the composition and quality. Another is linking within the content. And another is the use of, of advertisements. The main thing you need to understand about content is that longer content is performing a lot better. On average, the top 10 ranking URLs across 10,000 different search queries had 8,313 characters and over 975 words. A lot of us have been, been taught, a lot of us in the room think that a, a good article is four to 500 words, right? Yes? The trends are, the standard is, ch is changing. The status quo has been, the ante has been upped to a much higher. Remember seeing the in-depth articles on the Tsunami search results page? Google is rewarding content that is much more in-depth. We're going to talk about that a lot. The average number of internal links is 130. So if there's 130 internal links, that suggests that there's somewhere around 130 pages. Another consideration is that top ranking sites had very few ads. <laughs> What's that? Yes, we're going to get into that a little bit. Um, the quick answer is that you just want to make sure that you're providing a, a a valuable resource to your users. Yeah, so we're going to talk about linking. We're going to cover linking. And there's also a Q&A question uh, after this main session. You guys, OK? All right, so bigger sites are doing better. Size clearly matters with search engine optimization. <coughs> the larger your website, the more weight it has. And of course, there's a lot of other metrics that apply, performance metrics and things like that. But size, the size of your website is important. The more pages you have, the more, the more valuable the resource is, essentially. All right, so content is changing the way that Google analyzes content and the way that they look at content. It's no longer a keyword dominated market where you can just create a page based on a keyword and and have it rank. Topics need to be sent uh, focused around the the entirety of the topic. Be holistic in nature. Complex in depth. So if you're creating a page on a given topic, it needs to be comprehensive and cover everything that that topic is about. Focus on quality, focus on the search intent, what people might be asking or needing for their given search query. People type in a word, but they actually have six questions behind that word. So it's important to understand that. Co cover related topics. Is it, is it clear? Sure, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if, if you, the question is, I mean, the answer is yes. You should, you should have a lot of text where possible. It equals better rankings for more search terms. Google Hummingbird is a complete rewrite of the Google algorithm. They basically had to adapt to the, the evolution of conversational search. And what that means is that people are asking questions that aren't clearly definable by a given page. So they have to become more efficient at answering a wider range of, of questions like, Siri, can, can kangaroos jump backwards? Or Siri, where is, the, where is the best place to buy an iPhone S or an iPhone 6 near me? Right? There's a lot of conversational text in there. There's a lot of conversational language. So they had to completely rewrite their algorithm to understand all that kind of stuff. There's some funny questions on here. How, if you were a machine, if you were a search engine, how would you answer 
these questions. What result would you serve for do fish get thirsty? These are real questions. Probably fifth graders or, or third graders, right? Seven, eight year olds are the best. Teach you a lot about marketing. But it's seriously though, if you think about it, if you're a machine, you get a little confused, right? You're gonna probably pull up the most comprehensive article you can possibly find and serve that up because it covers everything about a fish, right? Or hunting Easter bunnies or whatever. <laughs> okay, so this is, this is a visual for what you wanna think about when you're creating content. If you were a hummingbird, where would you go play? Bottom picture, right? So make your content like this. Use flowery language. Use a, a wide variety of different vocabulary. Use well-structured sentences. Be precise, be efficient, but be comprehensive, be thorough. Be colorful. And create proof. There was a guy named John Rupert Firth who made huge contributions to the field of semantics, and he said, you shall know a word by the company it keeps. And wh essentially what this means is that if you're writing an article about social media marketing, for example. You're probably gonna have words like business and marketing and social media and website and company, right? All the standard terms. But if your page is really about social media marketing, you're probably gonna have topical proof terms like LinkedIn post and retweet and you know, uh, Facebook like and things that are hyper-specific to that topic. So that's what it means to have semantic proof within your content. If you're not including a lot of those types of words for your given topic, you're probably not going to rank that particular piece of content for a search query, especially if it's a broad, a broad query term. Does that make sense? Okay, linking. And content is very important. <coughs> Linking is, is important for a number of reasons. One is because it, it allows the search engines to find other pages that your, your, your site links to within your site and externally to your site. This also tells them how useful your content is for the user. It also is more useful to the user if you link to useful resources. So you can link internally. You can link from one page to another page from within the text itself. You might think about Wikipedia in this example. If you pull up any Wikipedia page, you can see anywhere from a dozen to five dozen different links internally to other pages that Wikipedia has covered on that given topic. It links to everything that is related to a topic, nothing that it does not. It's an absolute perfect resource for a search engine and therefore a user if they're researching. You can link externally as well, so if there's other other highly trusted resources or websites in your particular market, maybe there's government sites that talk, talk about medical information or, or there's a new site that has sports information or there's uh, other big sites like Wikipedia or Yahoo or CNN uh, th that are covering topics that are similar to the nature of the content you're writing on, you can link externally to that content too to provide a better resource for your users and the search engines will reward you for that, especially if the sites you're linking to have a lot of authority. A self-referential link, who can guess what that is? Well, nine out of 10 pages, it's basically the site links to itself. So a page that ranks has a link from the site that it's on. That's a strong indicator that if you're not linking to a page on your site from your main navigation or from your footer or from somewhere, it's probably never going to rank. So the tip there is make sure that every page that you want to perform in search is linked from the main navigation. Remove any broken or uh, unnecessary links. Make sure that's gone. That'll actually hurt against you. The use of images is, is very important. The more images you can use in your, in your content, unique, original images that have never been found before on the internet, your, your pages are gonna do better in search. On average, in the top 30 results, sites had 
almost six images, six unique images per page. That's a lot. It's a lot more than we've probably been doing, right? There's probably, mo most of us in the room, if we're creating content, it's probably to the nature of, you know, if we use an image, it's one, and then we create a 500 word article. So I want you to really think about image content with, with, your, with your website. We can optimize the file name, put the keyword phrase in the file name, use related or proof terms in the alt text, and surround that particular image with any related or proof terms or keywords that you want to rank for. Don't focus on optimizing your content on keywords, focus on optimizing on a topic. The use of ads, I would highly recommend you not use ads. They're not commonly found in high ranking pages. Most of the sites in the top 30 results do not contain ads, and if they do, it's usually less than one. So the tip is not to use them. If, if search engine optimization is a big component to your business model, I would just get rid of any ads on your site. And if you are using them, make sure you're not cluttering your site with the overuse. Uh, just limit the usage and place below the fold. Don't put them front and center. Make sure you're focusing on, on providing a valuable resource to your users. How so? The question is, is it different for e-commerce? The use of ads, what I mean by that is ad displays on your website. Did I not clarify that? Right, so there's, there's contextual advertising platforms that allow you to display ads on your website, such as AdSense, for example, Google Ads. You can double click, you can serve ads on your own site. So if you clutter your site with all these external advertising, contextual advertising resources, you're essentially not adding that much value to the web. But you, oh yeah, yeah, you internal clicking and, and um, you know, image, like an image offer to another page on your site or something, that's not an ad. But when it's called in through a script and served, that's considered an ad. Amazon? Well, Amazon has a, a robust website. It's extremely big. It has a lot of weight. They're basically the million pound gorilla in the, in the e-commerce space. They dominate commerce. And the reason being is because, one, they have millions of products. Two, they have millions of people on the site constantly. And they have content that seems to grow in nature, so it's constantly updated by reviews and things like that. It's user vetted information. So people engage with it, read reviews, spend you know 20 minutes on a page, click to another page. They also do dynamic navigation in their platform that, that that's basically silos the different parts of their site. So they have very strong site architecture and very optimized categories and things like that. So they're a very, very well built SEO site. And there's a lot of just ba base level descriptions on the site for every product that are essentially enough. But e-commerce is 